right? The volume of just, just that single rectangle is just one of these. Like, it's just one of those slices. This integral adds them all up for us, right? <clears throat> we good? All right, well, let's change the problem since I was asked about it. Why don't we do the same problem, but let's go around the y-axis instead. Do you think we'll get the same volume? What do you think? Generally speaking, no. Generally speaking, no. But I believe the symmetry of this problem is going gonna, is gonna to lead us to the same answer. But in general, it's not the same. You're going to usually get a different volume. I, I, I think it's going to be symmetric. I'm pretty sure it is. Because if you, if you run the identity function right through the middle of this, it's symmetric there. And so if I reflect it here or there, like go around this way or go around this way, I think I'm going to get the same volume. There's only, way to, only one way to tell, right? Just go do it. So same question, y-axis, right? All right, so let's, <clears throat> let's go through everything, the drawing and everything else. Start my drawing over. <clears throat> Pay attention to how I do this. You know on this problem how I drew the picture and then off to the side I drew the rectangle and labeled things? I'm going to do the same thing here, but because I'm going the other direction, my picture, my little sketch right here is going to be below it. You'll see. Let me, let me do it. So leave yourself some space below the picture. And now that I actually know what it looks like, I'm going to, I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit more. Okay, that was y equals x squared, right? And then this one was y equals square root of x, right? And this time we want to wrap it around the y-axis. So we want to come this way, like that, right? We want to wrap it this way. Do you all see why we can't use a vertical rectangle? If we wrap a vertical rectangle around here, we don't have that same washer that we had before. It's not, it's not a washer anymore. Now, we'll, we'll talk about that. 7.3 is how we can, uh, don't worry about it. Let's just do it. Let's just, let's turn the rectangle sideways and agree that if we wrap this this way, we're going to get that washer. Yeah? Now, if I'm going to use a horizontal rectangle, these two cannot be functions of x as they are right now. You have to switch them to functions of y. So how do you do that? Yeah, here you solve for x, so you take square root on both, right? So instead of this, take square root on both sides, you'll get x equals square root of y. And then on this one, to solve for x, you square both sides, right? Or not to solve for x, to get x by itself, not square root of x. You square both sides, and you'll get x is y squared. I'm doing that because my rectangles are going this way now. Now, watch what I do. I'm going to bring my axis of rotation straight down. This is my axis of rotation. My rectangle, I'm bringing it down, is about like this. I have the red curve. I have the red curve on the right side. I have the blue curve on the inside like that, right? You will see it? I'll draw the washer. Just if I imagine wrapping that, it would be like, you know, some washer's terrible washer, but you get the idea. That's what it would be if I wrapped it around. So I need the outer and inner radius. Same thing as I did before. I'm going to be standing on the axis of rotation, and I want to know the distance from here to here. That's my R out. And then the distance from here to here, that's my R in. What's r out? Square root of y, right? Because that's from here to the red, the square root of y. And then this one, inner radius, is that one, which is the blue one, which is y squared. Any questions?
So my volume should be pi, hmm, integral, where to where. Is our rectangle moving left and right? No, our rectangle is moving up, right? It's moving down up like this. So these limits of integration are going to be limits that we have on y, not x. And our, our thickness, right? The thickness of this thing is not dx, right? It's not dx, it's what? dy, because it's the y that's changing. So this is going to be dy. So this should be, uh, well, we'll get the limits in a second. Let's do the actual out, outer, inner, outer squared, so square root of y squared minus um, y squared is the inner one, but then squared, and then dy. Any questions there? Outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. dy is the thickness. Pi is because of the formula. We just need the limits of integration. Where do they hit each other? Zero. Well, here's zero, but this? It's one still, right? Yeah. It's still one, because you know if you plug one into both of those, they're the same. So it's zero to one. Are we going to get the same answer? We can get, what did we get in the last one? Three tenths pi? Or was it 10 thirds pi? What was it? Three tenths pi? Is that going to be three tenths pi? It's the exact same integral, isn't it? Except we're using y's instead of x's. So we should get the exact same answer, shouldn't we? Like I said, though, it's not, generally speaking, it's not that way. All right? Sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's not. Y'all OK? All right, we're going to stick with this same problem. All right, we're going to stick with the same problem. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change where we're going to rotate it. Instead of rotating around the, the, well, we did the x-axis, right? We did the y-axis. Now I want you to rotate it about, bless you. Um, yeah, let's go, let's go y equals negative 3 first. Yeah, let's, let's, get, let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. I'm sticking with the same example because then we don't have to worry about, we know the drawing already, right? We know what this looks like. So I'm going to start my drawing again. I've got, that's y is x squared. It's y is the square root of x. And I'm rotating this about y equals negative 3, which is what? What is y equals negative 3? It's a horizontal line, isn't it? That's a horizontal line. And it's down 3. So imagine down here at negative 3, right? At negative 3. This is where I want to rotate it. So there's like this imaginary line right here. And that's where my axis of rotation is. Right? That's different, isn't it? Like imagine if you took this rectangle right here, when you wrap it around the x-axis, you get this small shape, right? But if I wrap it around this axis, this is a much bigger object, isn't it? So I should get a different volume. So what I'm going to do is what I've been doing. To the side over here, I'm going to draw this. Watch what I do. Here's my x-axis. Here's my axis of rotation. Here's my rectangle. The blue one's on top. That's uh, square root of x, right? And then the red one's on the bottom. This is x squared. Right? What are the two things I need to know to use the formula now? Outer radius and inner. inner. Okay, so you are standing on the axis of rotation, right? That's you standing here. And now you want to know the distance from there to the outer edge of the rectangle. That means from here all the way down to here. That's our out. What is it? Square root of x plus 3. See, from here to here, right, from the x-axis to here, that's square root of x, right? 
but then you need to add this much distance. It's a tape measure, right? We know it's down three, negative three, but as a distance, it's three. So this R out, you can look at as a combination of being the three here and the distance from here to here, which is square root of x. I know that's small, but you can hear me, right? Three, square root of x. And so R out is gonna be square root of x plus three, right? That's your outer radius. What about your inner radius? x squared plus 3. Right? x squared plus 3. So from here to here, that's x squared. But from here to here, that's 3. And so from here to here, that's your inner radius. That's x squared plus 3. Yes? Yes. OK. We got everything we need, we just set up the integral now. So the volume should be pi integral, well, what's, what's our limits of integration? Uh, yeah, this is still zero to one, right? Because our rectangle is vertical, we're moving it left and right, so we're varying our x values between zero and one. So we're still going zero to one. Now be careful here, it's the outer radius squared, right, squared. So you have to do the square root of x plus 3 squared minus the inner radius, which is x squared plus 3, but that quantity squared, and then dx. That's it. Yes? Why did you choose a particle? <coughs> I choose, I, I choose, I choose it, I choose it, did, did, no. I, I chose, <laughs> I chose this vertical and not horizontal because my axis of rotation is perpendicular. Do you remember I said in the very beginning, I'm gonna put something up here and it's not gonna make a lot of sense. Whenever we have, whenever we have an axis of rotation and that's in one direction and then our rectangle is vertical, then we're gonna use washers. Now, the reason we do it is because, the reason we're doing vertical is because we have a nice function on top and a nice function on bottom, right? So it makes sense. When we're going this way, around the y-axis, I had to switch it so I could use the washer, right? You sure? Yeah, but the perpendicular Okay, yeah, so whenever we do this and that, you use washers. If we ever have, like right now, if I wanted to wrap this around like this way, we can do it. We can wrap this region around this way. We can do it, we just have to switch them to functions of y, not x. But there's going to be a way that we can do it even without switching it to function of x. I mean, function of y. Oh, I see. Just, ha just hang tight. They're functions of x, right? Any questions? So if we wanted to proceed with this, right, we would just FOIL this out, right, expand it, you know, do this times itself, FOIL it out, this times itself, it would be a nice, ugly bunch of powers of x, and we integrate them term by term, and plug in 1, plug in 0, subtract, we're done. So I'm not going to do that, obviously. I'm just going to say dot, dot, dot. That's something we could do. So I told you all that on your next test, you're going to have to calculate a few areas between curves. But when we get to this part on the test, I'm going to give you like one region, and I'm going to have you wrap it around like six or seven different lines. I'm going to have you go around the x-axis, the y-axis, different lines, different places. But I'm only going to ask you to set up the integrals. So on a test, this would be your answer. And that's it, you'd box it and move on. Yes? So for this homework and even the last one, there's some problems where you have to like evaluate e to a certain power. Do we actually evaluate those, or do you just want us to set up the answer? Well, on your homework, I think that you should actually try and take it the whole way. The reason I'm not doing this is because it's going to eat up too much time. And on an exam, I don't want to waste time having you expand this. I expect you could do that by hand, right? So there's no need to keep going. So it's really more of a time constraint. For your homework, s maybe set up all the integrals first, and if you have time, go back and evaluate them. See if you get the same answer that the book's getting. Okay, good? We're gonna, we're gonna change the problem now. I'm, I'm gonna rotate it not around y equals negative three. Let's go y equals positive three. Now, if you're looking for like a shortcut, like, oh, anytime I see plus, I do this, or if I see minus, I do this, 
I don't recommend you do that, okay? I recommend you draw each one and you figure out what R out and R in are gonna be. Because if you think you're gonna find a shortcut, if there, okay, if there was a shortcut, that's what I would show you, okay? But there's dangers, there's danger when you just try and find this like simple way of getting these. It's not as clean as that. I think the next example might illustrate that, hopefully. Yes, I'm gonna draw the picture again. Okay, so what, big deal. Okay, the line I'm gonna have is above it, so I'm gonna do this. Um, this was square root of x. Uh, I'm just gonna draw this part of it. y equals x squared. And I'm gonna wrap it around y equals three, which is up here. Yeah, this, it's gonna change the perspective of things. Go got it, that's my picture. I'm gonna wrap this vertical rectangle. I'm doing a vertical rectangle because these are functions of x and it makes sense to use a vertical rectangle. And my axis of rotation is perpendicular to that and therefore I should be using washers for this. Can you all see it wrapped? Okay, I'm gonna come over here to the side, coming this way and kind of draw it again. So here's my x-axis, right? Here's my rectangle. Here's my axis of rotation. My blue function's on top, that's square root of x. My red function's on the bottom, that's x squared. All I need now is the outer and the inner radius. So where am I standing? On the dotted line up here, right? And R out is the distance from, the, from me to the outer edge of the rectangle, relative to me, which is now here, isn't it? It's that edge. Yeah. So it's from here to here, that's now RO. And the distance from here to here, that's now R in. You see how that's changed a little bit for us because of where the axis of rotation was? So can you all imagine this being wrapped around? like this, right? It's this whole region's going this way. Yeah, so what is this distance? We need to figure out this distance. So all we know is that the distance from, from here to here, that's the square root of x, right? And then the distance from here all the way down is three, right? So from here to here is three. From here to here is square root of x. We wanna, we, oh wait, hold on. I wrote, wrote the wrong one, sorry. Apologize, I was doing the wrong one. This one, I, went, I meant to put this one right here. This from here to here, that's x squared, right? So from here to here is x squared. From here to here is three. And we want that distance from here to here, which should be three take away the x squared, right? Whatever three is, Subtract that x squared, and then that's what you would have for RO. Yeah? So R out is 3 take away x squared. Y'all see it or not? I mean, Y'all are looking at me kind of weird. Y'all are okay? What would R in be then? 3 minus that distance from here to here. So from here to here is square root of x, and then again, the whole distance is three, so you take away that. So r in would be the three take away square root of x. That's it, set it up. It's gonna look a lot like this, right? It's similar, not the same. So the volume of that would be pi integral zero to one Outer radius squared, so three minus x squared, squared, minus the inner radius, three minus root x, that squared, dx. Does this, is the geometry making sense? Is the picture making sense? Everyone's good? All right, I just have like a, 
Well, do I want to do this? Yeah, let's do one of these. Let's do one. All right, change the problem. Ready? All right, now I'd like for you to rotate this. We, what have we done so far? We've gone around the x-axis. We've gone around the y-axis. When we did the y-axis, we had to switch it to a function of y, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, but when we did around y equals negative 3 and y equals positive 3, we kept them as functions of x and we used the washers, right? So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to go around a vertical line instead. So instead of like horizontals like we just did, I want to do a vertical one. Let's do a vertical one to the left of this. So how about x is, let's go negative 4. So I'm drawing my picture again. Here's my picture. It's getting a little bit tedious. And this time I'm wrapping it around x equals negative 4. So here's negative 4 over here. And I want to wrap it like this, right? I want to wrap it like this. This whole region around this. Question? Well, that's a great, yeah, that's a great question. Can we do a vertical rectangle here? Well, I said in the beginning that washers is when the rectangle is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. If we use a vertical rectangle, it's not perpendicular and therefore washers doesn't work. All right. The reason washers doesn't work is because if you try and wrap this around, the formula doesn't work anymore. Like if you imagine, imagine a rectangle here wrapped around here, wouldn't it look like this? Hold on. It, that would be your, wrapped, your rectangle wrapped around. Do you see your rectangle in here? And it's been wrapped around that axis of rotation? Yes? That formula for the volume is not the formula we have over here. It's not pi outer radius squared minus inner radius squared times h. It's not that anymore. But actually, that's, we're going to do this. Okay, we're going to do this. We're just not there yet. So I'm forced right now, because all I know is Washer's method, I'm going to have to draw my rectangle horizontally. And if I draw it horizontally, then these have to change, right? These have to become functions of, of y. So we've already done that, right? x is square root of y. And then the other one will become x is y squared. And now when I, when I do my picture, you know how we did this over here and kind of labeled everything? I'm going to do it below this. You could go above if you want, if you have space. I'm going to go below, actually. Here's my axis of rotation. So here's my axis of rotation. Here's my y-axis. Here's my rectangle. Here's the blue curve. That's uh, y squared. And then the red curve is the square root of a, a square root of, wait, whoa, typo. That's a y in there, sorry, that's a y. Square root of y. Now I go stand on my axis of rotation. And I figure out the distance from me to the outer edge of the rectangle first. So from here all the way over to here, right? That's r out, and the distance from here to here, that's r in. So what's r out? It's the distance from here to here, right, which is what? Square root of y, right? And then you still have to go an additional, what? Plus 4. So the outer radius should be the square root of y plus 4. And the inner radius should be this distance, which is y squared, plus the 4 again, right? Plus 4 here. And that's it. You, you got everything you need. So that volume would be pi integral up and down this time, right? 
but it's still zero to one. Be careful on your homework or something. If you go, if you switch your rectangle this way, your limits of integration might be different than if you had gone this way. It's not always going to be zero one here and zero one there. Depends on the curve. Um, outer radius squared. Outer, where am I here? So that's square root of y plus four, that quantity squared minus uh, y squared plus four, that quantity squared dy, right? Not dx. There it is. Whatever that integral is, right? I mean, this is where we would, we would really want to go like to like, you know, Wolfram or Symbol Lab or something and just like type in that integral, get the volume and move on, right? All right. How do you think you would do if I asked you to go around like x equals five, if I put this over here? What would it be? Imagine there was an axis of rotation here. And that was, let's say that was five from here to here. Outer edge is here, right? So from here to here, that's R out. And then from here to here is R in. Yeah. And you'd have to do some subtraction, right? Like five minus something and five minus something. I'll leave that to you. Yes? The axis of rotation bisect Great question. Does our axis of rotation ever like impede on the region itself? No, because then it would, it would be weird. You'd get a double volume. It would be like, I mean, just imagine, it's hard, yeah. Like if I take this piece of paper and wrap it around the x-axis, I'm gonna get a cylinder, right? But if I go halfway in and wrap it around, then when I go halfway, I have a cylinder already. And if I keep going around again, I get twice that volume, I get double that cylinder. Does that, that kind of make sense to you? Well, we, we won't ever do that. We'll never, in this class, we will never have our axis of rotation be within the region because most physical objects we deal with aren't going to, aren't going to look like that, right? Right? Um, so we will s deal strictly with, with horizontal and vertical lines only. Our axis of rotation will always be horizontal or vertical and they'll never be in the region. Now they might touch, like I could have had you wrap around that line right there that goes through, that's okay. If it just touches just one point at the edge, that would be fine. Yes? Will we ever have axis of rotations that are functions? Oh, okay. I think I know what you mean. Like a, it doesn't have to be a quadratic, but just a linear function. Okay, so if it was a linear, then it would be a line that's, that's not horizontal or vertical, like that. So if I want to take this region and wrap it around this line, we will never do that, okay? Is there a way to do it? Yes. It's not easy though. You have to do some sort of transformation and basically like turn everything and it's, it's much more difficult. Because then you're not even dealing with like, once you turn it, you're, you don't necessarily have a function of X or Y anymore. So you have to probably draw these as like using what's called parametric, which is, I showed you on your calculator, right? Parametric, you have to treat everything like parametric functions and then once you get them to parametric functions, then you can do something. Um, that's actually, you know, we don't do that in Cal 3, but we, we actually develop the tools that you would need to do it if you needed to actually do it. So, all right, we good? We happy so far? Not happy, but somewhat okay? Yes. All right, so I wanna take something a little more complicated like this, start, we're done with this example. Thank you, you served its purpose. Okay, I wanna take y equals sine x on the interval zero pi. I want to part A, rotate about the x-axis Part B, I want to rotate around the y-axis. So we're doing our limits of integration? We're doing our limits. Well, I'm telling you the restriction on sine and how to graph it, right? 
So I want you to look at sine function only from 0 to pi, which just gives you that piece right there, right? That's y equals sine x. And this is part A. I'm going around the x-axis, right? So my axis of rotation is here. And do you all agree then I should use a vertical rectangle here? Um, I should be clear here. Let me be clear here. Take y equals sine x um, and then y equals zero. In other words, I want to make sure that you understand I'm talking, like I'm cutting it off here, right? So y equals zero and sine x, that region right there. If I didn't say that, then you could argue that there is no region, that it just kind of like opens up. So I want to take that, wrap it around the x-axis. So I'm going to have a vertical rectangle like this. So let me come over here. Here, here's my axis of rotation. I'm going to go a little faster now. I have my rectangle. And the only thing I have on top, right, is the sine function, right? That's sine x. And on the bottom, you could say it's zero, right? The zero function, right? That's zero down there. And it's always zero, right, the whole time? So what's the outer radius? Sine x, inner radius, zero. So I should just be able to go right to this, right? Volume is pi integral, rectangles going from zero to pi, because that's what I gave you, right? Zero to pi. And then outer radius squared, sine squared x, right? Minus inner radius squared, zero, which I don't need, right? Isn't that just sine squared x? Can you integrate sine squared x? How? One half, power reducing, right? So we would know how to do that, right? If we needed to, we could do that. So dot, dot, dot. I'm not going to do it. Questions? Sure. What about part B, though? We run into a problem, don't we? The problem is there's not an easy way. Now, there is a way, but there's not an easy way to turn this into a function of y. If you try and use the arc sine, right, if you say, oh, okay, I can, I can do this. I can do sine inverse on the left, and then I can do sine inverse on the right, and then that will give me x equals sine inverse y. The problem with this is that there's domain restrictions here. If you're going to use an inverse sine function, your domain restrictions are that when you draw this sine function, you can only go between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And so that causes an issue, right? So do you all see it's not easy for me to get it to a function of y easily? So I wonder if there's a way I can still wrap this region around the, the y-axis, with, but leaving it as a function of x and not requiring the rectangle to go the other way, right? So this part right here, we don't know. How are we doing on time? Okay. We don't know, right? So 